Hello, hello, friends and family. Hey, good to see you guys, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Live-ish at Five-ish with Pastor Lauren as we jump into the book of Acts for a quick Bible study. And I'm hoping that today is finding you all well and full of faith, praise the Lord, and faith in Jesus. That's all it takes, just believing in Him. As we believe in Him, He moves us to the place we need to be, amen. And, hey, I hope you guys are enjoying as beautiful as the day I'm seeing around here. It has just been gorgeous. A little warm. A little warm, but we'll take it. We'll take it. It took a long time to get there, right? <laughs> we'll take as much good stuff as we can get. And I just want to say hello and thanks for wel or thanks for joining us. Thanks for welcoming us. Thanks for joining us today. It's always uh, an honor and a pleasure to sit with you guys and, and to jump into Word together. Amen. I know you guys have a whole bunch of choices and things and places you could be today, but um, I just want to give you a, a thanks, you know, for joining us here. It's a, it's a pleasure. Well, let us see. Oh, yeah. Got to say this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you if today is your birthday. And if it is, do yourself a favor and accept that free gift that God has given in Jesus well, there's no time, no day like today where the day is salvation. Today is the day of salvation. My tongue is getting tied up on me today. I need something to drink. I think I'm just getting a little, a little clammy. <laughs> well, and if you're driving, be careful. Be careful. Don't look. Don't look. Just listen. Okay. Well, God bless you. And I'm holding the phone again today because I didn't expect to be out this long. I enjoyed an extra some extra time with the kiddos there as we all were having some fun just oh, enjoying this sunshine and watching all the little ones running around being goofy screaming hollering carrying on enjoy that as much as you can oh man they don't stay little long do they, they just sprout right up and that gets good too it's got its place but enjoy what you can when you can no doubt about it love with all your heart all right, anyway, well, we're here today in Acts chapter 5, and what a beautiful place to be, as we have seen now what happens when the Holy Spirit moves in us, and he begins to make everything happen, and also, what happens when we change our minds, and decide to... Uh, well, we think we're going to go all in with the Lord, and then we change our minds. Uh, some bad things can happen. Let's see what happens here pretty soon in chapter 5 of Acts. You ready? All right. It says, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, and his wife also being privy to it, understanding what had happened, and brought a certain part of it, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? And while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. That means he died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Now this is something that hadn't been heard of before. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much? And she said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straight away at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, 
and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest thus no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets, sorry about that, and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand and speak into the temple to the, to the people all the words of this life. I want to stop right there for a minute. And so much has happened already here in all of these uh, short verses. And we're only at to verse 20 right now. And it says, And with Ananias and Sapphira, this story of how they came, and it was in their power to, as they chose to, uh, whatever they chose to do with what was going on, they said they were going to do one thing, and then they did another. And the question was asked, why have you decided to lie to the Holy Spirit? And, you know, we don't hear of a story like that ever happening again in the Word, um, except this. It, what is it then that is going on, and what can we understand from this story? Except that when we come to fullness in God, if we decide to go all in with Him and then go back, it says, he who lays his hand to the plow and then looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. It's not worthy of God. It's the same essence. But this is happening in the physical that is being talked about in the spiritual in that, in that, in that part right there. And this was precedence being set for all to see that even by the power of the Holy Spirit, um, it's been taught many times, once saved, always saved. And we don't stand in that place um, as part of that teaching because it's all the time up to you. What you decide to do between God will honor your decision even to the gates of hell. And he's not willing that any should perish, but all the world won't be saved. It's all that believe in him and all that will follow him with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. And if you turn around by your own decision and decide to turn back, so many people would say it's not possible to decide to turn back, but then why is Hebrews 10 there for us? For those that decide to turn back, turn away, after tasting the, the fullness and riches of God, have turned away, there is now no more sacrifice for that, for them. Well, there are many, many uh, scriptures that relate and, and help us to understand. But then some would say, well, what about the scripture that says, that the love of God is complete. There's no one that can pluck him from their hands, and nothing that we can do, and so on. Uh, nothing, no power in hell, and no power on earth, and there's nothing that we can do to pluck him from his hands and from his love. Well, it's true. His love is going to follow us all the way to the gates of hell. But again, he's not willing that any should perish. But by our own choices, he is giving us the freedom of choice even to our own demise, though he gives warning and never to come all halfway in with the Lord. We've got to be all in. It's all in or nothing. It's all in or by the precedent set with Ananias and Sapphira, we can lose our life. And it's the eternal life that really is the thing that we need to fear, need to be worried about and, and considering all the time uh, and then even as we see Peter being able to work in the spirit where so much as his shadow over touching you know, overshadowing some people 
come by, and by the grace of God, healing came, and the power of God flowed through their faith, that even as his shadow touched them, then healing was came, had came. That's incredible to watch and to understand and to know. Sorry, I'm just now seeing any kind of messages that can be set up. If anybody had anything to put out there. Hi, Asani. Good to see you. Um, this phone is kind of crazy how, how those things work. But uh, Hi, Michelle. It's good to see you here. Thank you for watching. I, I just appreciate you guys so much. And this message is so crystal clear that even though Peter, walking in the power of God, is still subject to the situation of life, in the situation that that is before us and the the authorities that are there they can still take a hold of him in the person here we've got Ananias and Sapphira dropping dead but then the authorities come and take a hold of him and nothing happens to them what's up with that it's all about the process with God it's all about his word his will his and the things that he is setting forward in his standard I hope that's making sense coming out right it's all about him and what we do in him and understanding it even though the enemy can have power over us nothing can touch us nothing can take away our salvation except our own choices so after we find that she fell down straight away and then here they are those that are preaching were put in prison but then the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said go and stand and speak in the temple of the Lord of all the words of this life well if I was set free and and uh, was you know in prison for preaching the gospel the last thing I think about doing is preaching the gospel again in the same place where I just got in prison just across the street <laughs> or in the square, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, it's time to get out of town. I'm getting out of Dodge, Jack. I'm out of here. <laughs> We're going to go to the next city, maybe, and preach. Not, not right across the street, but here they go. And here, 21, and when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to, to have them brought, but when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly was found shut with all safety. It was totally secure. The doors were still locked, basically. And the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found nobody within it. That's scary. That's kind of weird, right? Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them where to this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching. They're just over there, just down the road. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. As too late, they done brought it upon theirself. Amen. Oh, well, we got to keep on praying for them. But you intend to bring this blood, uh, this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on the tree. There he's saying, you brought the blood of Jesus upon yourself. You did it. And just by denying him, we can do that very thing by denying him and by denying the truth. We bring the blood of Christ upon us, not for unto salvation, but unto our judgment. So that's something to consider. Either way, you got the blood of Christ to deal with, whether you believe it or not. I think that's pretty amazing. The God of the fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's what that blood is for. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given 
to them that obey him. Who's the Holy Ghost? That's the Spirit of Jesus and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Notice, again, there was a situation when, when you're cut to the heart, you're, you're getting ready to kill somebody. When you're pricked in the heart, you're ready to, <laughs> you're ready to receive Jesus. That's kind of weird how that goes. I just keep noting that. Every time I see it cut or pricked in the heart, one or the other, I'm, I'm just watching that. Hey, thanks for the, the likes and the, and the hearts, guys. I appreciate that. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, You men of Israel, sorry about the shaking there, I'm trying to study it again. They said, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as such things these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves. That's, that's not, no slouch. That's nothing to, to um, you know, to let go by 400 people grouping up together to follow somebody. But still, and all, as many as obeyed him were scattered. And brought to nothing. Well, think about that. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him. He must have had a great following as well. But even still, were dispersed, and came to nothing. And now I say unto you, Refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, you won't be able to overthrow it. Lest happily you be found even to fight against God. And it means lest perhaps you be found to fight it even against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, <laughs> well, let's just beat them then, you know, shoot. It can't be that big a deal. Whew, what? After they found the apostles and beat them, they commanded they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Oh, boy. I've been in kind of curious situations. And... You know, going through it is no fun. There's no fun going through it. <laughs> but after you're done, I, I do rejoice many times when I suffer shame for his name, but it's because I know he'll rise up with me in power. And that's the only reason, you know, I, in one essence or another. I, I mean, it just seems that, uh, wow, to know that we've been counted worthy, that's something to really think about deeply, you know. Are we ready for that? And especially like to be beaten down? This is why I believe that the Lord showed up with them so strong is because they were under such great oppression over, you know, and, and to give them strength to move forward in that. And then also to show, I mean, here he is walking with them and, and, and they're with them strong. And as they lay hands and even pass by and the shadow brings healing. Oh, yeah presence of God is all in this place. Amen. <laughs> I think the greater the persecution, the greater the power of God is, is revealed. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm so glad that they continued, aren't you? Because without that, we wouldn't have this word to to rest in today and if they cowered out and bowed down and and decided to stop but man may the word continue in us may the strength of God continue in us to reach all the people in our own life can I ask you a question I'm going to kind of put you guys on the spot for a second if you are standing in heaven and on the day that we're all standing before God 
And let's suppose there's a line of all the people that we've ever met or been in touch with that could have, uh, we could have spoken with, talked to, witnessed to. And your eyes are going to come in contact with those that you had opportunity to talk to, maybe as your neighbors, maybe it was your friends, maybe uh, family members, who knows. Your eyes are going to come in contact with those in the day of judgment, in the day we all stand before God. And perhaps they'll be judged first, or, or who knows how it'll go, but let's suppose they stand before God. Everybody that's following the Lord in truth, um, stand there for a moment. Everybody else that have not decided to follow the Lord, step forward. I suppose he just separates us in two groups. Like, you know, he says the sheep and the goats, the, the good fish from the bad fish. And then he says, all of these that decided against me, depart from me. And he sends them out and into utter darkness forever. As they come by you, are they going to look at you with or with reproach you know they're going to say you knew me and you never told me about the ways of god you never told me about salvation why did you let me come to this place without ever telling me the truth i boy i, I tell you what i pray every day that i never meet somebody that would be able to say that to me is everybody and i've told people that i said you know what this may seem seem silly, but here we have we've been working together for a couple times, or something, and it's my hope that if our eyes meet in heaven, that you'll never say to me, "Why didn't you ever tell me the truth?" Because I try to tell everybody I can, everybody I come in contact with, and that's the purpose of these um, these little Bible studies every day is to give each and every person that would ever consider even watching this um, the opportunity to find Jesus. Every day I, I, I'll try to share the gospel message in this. And even though, you know, we may be reading a chapter that doesn't come close to talking about the gospel message. Just because if our eyes ever meet in heaven, you'll never have the opportunity to say, you never told me, you never warned me of this thing's coming. So the question is back to you. How many people do you know? How many people have you met in your life that you've never really shared the gospel with? And you know very good and well by the way they're living or by their actions and things that they're far away from God. Not that you'll be their judge, but that you can be a fruit inspector and see whether they're close to God or not. I can see real, real, real quickly who needs the Lord and who doesn't have it. By their fruits, you'll know these, says the Lord. So I'm asking you, if you know... That there are people in your life you haven't talked to about the Lord. What are you going to do about that today? Can you change that situation? Can you do something about that? Because it's a reality. It's a matter of life and death. All of these things and all of this understanding that we're gaining through his word is not for nothing. It is to cause you to be fruitful. It's caused us all to be fruitful, to gain knowledge in Him, to come closer to Him, to know Him better than ever before, so we can not only help ourselves, but help everybody else that we come in contact with. And that's what it's all about. And we are never to be silent. We're always to go and to share His story. Because it's all for all who will believe. And don't worry about those who's going to be angry with you and give you trouble and and try to challenge you and try to debate you and don't and, and won't believe no matter what you say because that particular conversation may not be for them it'll be for those all of those who are listening all of those who are watching it'll be for all of the everybody likes to see the train wreck <laughs> Everybody wants to stop and see what all the, the, the hassle's about, you know. Don't worry about those that deny you. And, and remember, they're not denying you. They're denying God. That you're standing there as an ambassador for him. You're standing there bringing his word, not your own. That's the way it should be. Don't bring your own opinions and things. Just bring the word of God and let them know the truth. That he who hath Christ has life. But the Bible says, he who does not have Christ has not life, 
But the wrath of God abides upon him still in this life and the next. That's the most important thing. That's what we need to do is to go out and share that good news, to share the gospel in Jesus' name and do it with love, not with judgment, not getting into an argument about someone's perversion or someone's condition in their life, you know, that you know is far away from God. Don't get into a debate about it. Just come bringing the truth, that's all, that Jesus Christ is Lord and there's no other name under heaven by which men are saved. He's the only way. You bring that truth and you leave it in their court. And whether they decide yes or no, it's up to them. Amen. Well, I pray everybody listening here is deciding yes. <laughs> and to go all in with Jesus. Because that's what it takes to be all in. You can't be half in the world and half with God. Because you'll be ripped to pieces. And heart, soul, and everywhere else that you can line up with him. Heart, soul, and spirit. Mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, you'll just be ripped to pieces. So I'm praying that you'll be all in with Jesus. Amen. And then, above all else, always remember <laughs> to love each other and trust in Jesus with all your heart. Amen. Hey, you guys have a blessed day. Thank you so much for joining me. I just love that. And I love all the hearts and likes and everything that you all put up there. And any kind of comments is great, too. I, I appreciate it. I always go back after and try to answer them all because um, every one of you are so important to me and to the Lord. No doubt about it. God bless you. Have a good day, okay? We'll see you later. Lord willing. Bye-bye.